Okay guys, how's it going? Get the most made anchors out there. I'm back again to talk about uh, what I said I would talk about earlier. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off this list. I haven't gone by the name. I've gone by the, um, I've gone by what it actually is, right? So we know that a fisherman's bend or a anchor bend is actually a hitch, right? And not a bend. Um, you're not bending another line to another. You're putting it around a, a ring of an anchor or something else. So, um, or the square knot, which is actually a um, bend. I'm going to go in that fashion. I'll call it by its name. I'll talk about that. Um, so, and I'll show you each one of these a couple of times, and I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. So, put this up here so I can keep track of what I'm doing, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So first on our list that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about a clove hitch, right? Clove hitch is one of the four required knots in the Coast Guard test. Um, and um, it's used to do some light work with, right? Make uh, non-life-threatening um, life types of uh, hitches, on, or, uh, hitches on something, right? Like hang a fender over the side or something like that. It has some flaws to it. It can come out easily. Um, there's some additions you can make to it, but the standard clove hitch is just used for light things, hanging a heaving line in your bosun hole or something like that. So the way that you would do a clove hitch is you're going to come across the top of the um, handrail or the bar or whatever you're trying to do it on in this fashion, and you're going to come across like this, right? You're going to bring it across in what's called an X, right? So when I see here that I've come over the top and I've made a turn, come around, I'm gonna come right back in and I'm gonna follow this, right? Almost like a continuation, like it's moved over. Let me show you how to do a clove hitch again. Again, I'm gonna bring it over the top. I'm gonna to cross it over, almost so I form an X, right? And I'm gonna come back right and I'm gonna follow this standing part going in the opposite direction. and tighten it up. Um, so here's the problem, right? If it's subject to a lot of jerking motion, right, it can roll out. Um, there are ways to uh, re uh, remedy that, but that's not part of this uh, discussion today. I'm just showing you the basics, right? So we're talking about a clove hitch. I'm gonna go over the bar. I'm gonna come over and cross and make an X. I'm gonna come right back past the standing part. Secure it like that. Right? Excellent way, hang your fenders over the side. Something like that. Okay, so we talk about some more hitches. We're gonna talk about the difference between a rolling hitch and a stopper hitch. Now one thing I told you earlier that a hitch is mostly goes on spars, stanchion, handrails, solid objects. On a rolling hitch, the application can be used to stop off a soft line. You can make it around a soft line. Say you have to transfer a mooring line from a uh, deck winch or a capstan to a set of bits or you have a jammed uh, a jammed capstan and you don't want to lose all that um, line that you took you can use this on a soft piece of line so there's a, a variation to what I said about normally about hitches so and a rolling hitch and a stopper hitch again something I kind of um, have some heartache with I believe that they are both a rolling hitch in two different fashions, but the Coast Guard sees to call one of them a stopper hitch and one of the rolling hitch, but they're tied in two different ways. So for going for a rolling hitch, if I, this was a mooring line that I wanted to make a stopper off to, I could do it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over once, okay? Like I would for a clove hitch. I'm gonna come over twice. And now I'm going to look, look to separate these two and bring them like that. Now, my direction of pull will be like this. I can slide this. It will hold. I take tension off, slide it, and then it will hold, slide it, right? And I'll show you that again. So we're talking here about a rolling hitch, okay? A rolling hitch. I'm going to come over like I would for a clove hitch. Okay, I'm going to come over one more time again, and then I'm going to separate this pair and come out like this. Okay, 
again. Now I have a rolling hitch. My direction of pull will be this way. Okay. So that's what they call a rolling hitch. What the Coast Guard calls a stopper hitch or another variation of that. I come over here. I'm going to make a round turn. Come all the way around. And then I'm going to cross over like I'm making a clove hitch and come back through. Okay. Bring it together. Oh, and by the way, for those that are looking at the diagrams, a lot of times you'll see the diagram looks like something like that when it's tightened up. Right? Again, my direction of pull. Okay? Can slide up and down. It'll hold. Take the tension off. I can slide it. I'll show that to you again. I don't really have a way to check in this thing, so I hope I haven't lost connection or you guys are gone. Um, so I'll have to maybe check here in a second. Again, I'm going to come over and make a round turn. Oh, and live TV. So we. Let's see if I can do that again. Hey, uh, you're not paying anything for this, so don't be too mad. Um, all right, let's start again. So I'm talking about making this um, stopper hitch. Uh, I'm going to come around. I'm going to cross over. I'm not doing this right. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. All right, here we go again. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to come around. I'm going to cross over. And I'm going to come back through. Holy smokes. You know I'm a bosun mate. If you're expecting some high Michael Bay action-packed uh, video, you got the wrong person. Just a knuckle jock and tech hate. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, talking about a stopper hitch. Oh my gosh, I cracked myself up. All right, let's talk about a fisherman's bend or an anchor bend. So again, this would be a variation of a round turn and two half hitches. Um, so what I'm gonna do is make a round turn, okay? And what I generally do is keep my finger in there, like this, to point in the direction that I want for my half hitch. And this is something I could use to attach to a a small ring or something to an anchor, to chain, something like that. And I'm gonna pass my first half hitch through the round turn, okay? Then I'm gonna take my other one, pass it through there again, okay? What happens here is as I tighten down on this, the round turn tightens and it bites down on my first half hitch, right? This is still gonna slide, still gonna get slide out of this. Don't use this for something like you said, you know, it might hold here, but it might not hold. I wouldn't use it for like that in that manner. Um, I'm just showing you this is a, a more secure way or a different way. So again, I'm going to do a round turn, right? I'll create a channel for my finger to point in the direction that I want my half hitch to go. I'm going to make another half hitch. This is referred to as a fisherman's bend. Okay. There we go. Okay. Fisherman's bend or an anchor bend. Let's talk about a timber hitch. Um, while I don't have a giant piece of timber, um, an important thing for you to remember on a timber hitch is that you don't want to use it on a smooth surface. Pipe, steel pipe, plastic pipe, acetylene bottles, things like that. It needs to be on something that has a rough surface. Preferably wood, logs, things like that. Great for extracting logs out of the water. I'm not gonna pull a big giant hefty log out of here right now, so I'm just gonna demonstrate on this, but know that it doesn't go on a slick surface. So when I make my, simply make my timber um, hitch, I'm gonna come around the standing part of the line and wrap myself back around this way. Now, if I wanted to complete this um, into a killick hitch, I would add two half hitches to it, right? Making the timber hitch the anchoring part of the uh, hitch, and then the two half hitches is the pulling, right? So again, I'll show you a timber hitch. Take my timber hitch, come around, come around, um, let's go this way, well, that's fine. Come around the standing part of the line. 
and then wrap it back around itself. Okay. I'm going to cinch down on that tight, and now I have made myself a timber hitch. Okay, and then for, um, let's see here, we'll talk about this last one. So the last one is going to be a round turn and two half hitches. And what we're going to talk about for that and the round turn and two half hitches is how it's applied. And it's the same, almost the same way as a anchor bend fisherman's bend. This time though, I'm not coming through the round turn. I'm simply just making a round turn, adding a half hitch. adding a second half hitch, right? Again, a little less, um, a little less, uh, I don't know. They say it's a really strong knot. I've never had one fail. I know there's a YouTube video out there that says that it's not safe, but never had a problem with using a round turn and two half hitches. Um, and it depends on the line that you're using, right? Um, but pretty, pretty solid, pretty stout. I don't like that tail. I'd like it to cinch up a little bit more. So just work on it there. Okay. So there in a nutshell, I've covered the hitches that we have for um, what we're talking about. So let's talk about uh, one second here, if you can bear with me. Let's talk about some bends. Like I said earlier, a square knot is still a square knot or sometimes called a reef knot, but we are joining two lines of equal size together. So um, this is a, one that people mess up a lot. You can get a granny knot. Um, you can get a thief's knot if you're not tied correctly. I still have to do this one the same every single time. So what I do is I go right over left, left over right, okay? I've made myself a um, square knot or a reef knot. Important to know, in this case, they need to come out on the same side. They need to come out on the same side. So um, you'll see this is decorative. A lot of times you'll see it as, you know, or something like, uh, just kind of like the uh, Carrick Bend, you'll see some people do it like that where they cut off the ends, but it's very important in this application that they come out on the same side, okay? Again, something we're not going to use for a lot of safety reasons, but it's good for tying up parcels. Maybe, um, um, let me think, I'm having a hard time here for a second. But uh, yeah, good for light applications. <clears throat> Talk about a sheet bend. <clears throat> so a sheet bend is used to join two lines of unequal size. And yes, you can use it to join the same size lines together. But one of the <clears throat> things that it's good for is applying to lines of unequal size. So what I want to make sure that I do, so here's my bend, I'm sorry, here's my um, bite. I've made a bite in the line. Come up, uh, sorry, around the entire body of the, of the bend here, or I'm sorry, of the bite here, right? and then right back through itself. Okay. Holds the same characteristics as a bowlin in its construction. Lines lead differently. That's all I got to say about that. <clears throat> Anyways, I'll do it again for you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna come up through the bite, come around the body, Back through. Important that you have opposite leads on this. You don't want your leads to come out on the same side. Great. Pretty wonderful. I think a pretty great and a useful one to use. Um, so great for joining a smaller line to a larger line, like maybe a heaving line to a mooring line. While I'm at it in here, I'm going to talk about the difference between a bucket bend and a sheet bend because the, uh, there isn't too much of a difference. 
The difference between a Beckett bend and a sheet bend is that simply a Beckett bend is through a spliced eye, an eye that's been spliced. It's exactly the same except for I wouldn't have this tail, I would have a splice. So if you hear somebody talk about the difference between a Beckett bend and a sheet bend, a Beckett bend is a spliced eye, a sheet bend is a tad to a bite, okay? If I'm going to double it, I'm simply going to come around it and through like I would normally for just a regular sheet bend. All I'm going to do this second time is just come around again. And now I have a double sheet bend, or if it was a splice die, a double Beckett bend. Okay. Oh, let's talk about a, well, so we got that, we got those covered, um, the ones that were important there, uh, were important there. So now we'll talk about some knots. Okay. A bowline. Many ways to tie it. You all have your favorite way to do it. We can argue all day till the cows come home whether it should be an inside bowline or an outside bowline. I've had this discussion with many people. Um, books refer to it with the uh, working end on the inside. So I'm always going to teach it that way. If they, you tie it on the outside way and you have a good use for that, then I'm not going to argue with you. I believe that a bowline is properly tied when it has an inside. Um, the working end is on the inside. So pretty simple. Lots of ways to do it. But simply going to come up through the hole around the tree or the standing part and right back down through the hole. Okay, one thing I like to tell my students when I'm doing this is I don't want my tail to be short. Nobody wants that. I also don't want my tail to be long, right? So what I tell them is somewhere, no, I don't want it to be any shorter than a quarter of the uh, loop. I don't want it to be any more than three quarters of the loop, somewhere around half. So I'm right about there. Pull on it a little bit, it'd probably be right in the half mark. Again, a bowline, right? Many ways to tie it. This is a simple way. Gonna make a, and there's another thing that people do. They like to make these big loops when they're doing it. Why? You don't need that big of a loop, it's confusing. Make it the size of what you're trying to put through it. All right, so I'm gonna come up through the hole Right? Standing part. I'm going to come around the tree and back down through the hole. When you pull this, you don't want to pull on this working end and the standing part. That's not going to work well for you. Pinch these together right? and set it. Right? Make sure it's nice and set. And that works best if you grab this and then pull this. Works the best way that I found. Okay. French bowling. French bowling is a way to make an emergency um, sling, lower somebody over the side, pull somebody out of the water. It starts the same way. Going to make my loop. I'm going to come up through the hole once. I'm going to go through the hole twice. Okay. Um, I'm going to come around the tree, back down through the hole. Okay. So I have two loops. Adjustable, All right? Let me make it a little bit bigger for you this time. Let's see here real quick. Haven't lost anybody yet. So let's do this again. So I'm gonna make a loop, I'll make it farther down. I'm gonna make a loop or there. I'm gonna come up through that. I'm going to go through it again. Okay. I'm going to come down around through here and right back through. I'm going to seize it. Or uh, not seize it, but uh, dress it up there. Okay. Again, two loops. Um, can use this as an emergency sling. The way that would work is you would put this part, um, you would sit on this part, this part would go around your torso and under your arms for hauling up. And that's how you make it. Super uncomfortable, not a big fan of it. Okay, running bowling. Always a fun one. 
running bolins. So the way that I make running bolins is your eye does your initial eye does not need to be very big. Also, people ask me, can, why can't I just pull it through? Um, because that's not the way that it's taught. Um, if that's what you choose to do, you want to pull 300 feet of line through it or whatever, be my guest. But I'm just going to make a loop. I'm going to come over the top of the standing part. I'm going to make my bowlin, which again does not need to be very big because that's not the part we're concentrating on. Okay, so I've made this small bowlin. And now, I've created what's called a running bowlin. I can use this, one of the things that we've used this for is I will make the loop super long and retain the eye with me up at the pier or over the side of the vessel and I will drop the loop over the side. I'll let it get wet and sink in the water and then try to work it around with either a pike pole or something like that around a log or an object in the water. When I feel like I have a secure, I'll drop that eye down until I've choked it around the object that I'm trying to get a hold of, right? So, that's not. so um, again, I'll show you how I do it. So, I don't need to have a huge eye in this one. Um, all I'll do is take and make my um, loop. I'm gonna bring it around, over the top of the standing part, up around and through, down again, right? Hope that was in, in view for you guys. I'm still learning this, okay? Now I have my small little bowlin and I have my loop that I can adjust and choke, right? If you really don't have warm and fuzzies about this, you could seize it, you could throw some tape on it, sew it, do whatever you want if you don't like the fact that it's that small, okay? Bowlin on a bike. Probably one of the hardest ones to teach people. They get it wrong a lot. Understandable, I got it wrong too when I first tie, started tying it. So a bowling on a bite is gonna be where I have neither of the bitter ends available in this case. And in case that's gonna be both the bitter ends. And I'm gonna to have to utilize making a bowling in the bite of the line. So, starts out the same. Gonna make myself a, let's see if we can do this a little bit longer. So, I'm gonna make this here, all right? I'm gonna take my loop on my bite and I'm gonna come up through here and I'm gonna grab this part here, not this, but this part here. So I'm gonna bring it around all of this through and I'm gonna rotate this to the back. So it's gonna look like this before I cinch it down, okay? So I bring it down, all right? Pretty, all right, so you guys are not so critical, all right? And there, again, I have two loops, right? Um, they don't adjust like the French bowlin or the Portuguese bowlin does, but they are made in the bite of a line. Um, when you take this out of practice, I strongly suggest you don't take it out at the end, but you take it back the way that you did it so you can memorize it. So again, I'm gonna make myself a loop. Okay, I'm gonna come up through that and I'm gonna come around my two loops. I'm gonna bring this around, flip it over, rotate it under, all right? You can see here what I have here, right? Like a bowling. If you make it and it adjusts, it is not, a, um, it is not a bowling on a bite. Not a bowling on a bite if it adjusts. And I'm not even gonna show you how you make that mistake, but it's a common one. I don't wanna teach anybody anything wrong, so I'm just gonna show you the right way. But I can rest assured if it comes out that way, it is not right. Oops, what are you doing, boats? Okay, cat's paw. Talked about that the other day when we were making, um, when we showed the hook video on YouTube. So again, I'm just twisting this so that I can put it on a hook, right? Kind of like a um, Spanish bowling or the start of a Spanish bowling, the way you twist, you put this on the hook. It means if your load shifts, it won't slide, um, and it tends to bite down on the hook. And so that's how you would do a cat's paw. Let's talk about it again real quick. So I'm just gonna twist in the same direction. All right, 
And again, I've made a cat's paw. This is for putting like an endless sling on or a piece of line um, on a hook for a crane or a boom or a dab at something like that. And that's uh, how that wouldn't be tied. The figure eight. Figure eight's a good stop or not. It's also good for if you can't melt, don't have tape, don't have a way to keep an end of a line from fraying. All right, very simple. But, so this would be just stopping real quick. This would be an overhand knot, probably the most common knot, also the worst for the line breaking and also for getting out. Um, so it's a knife knot. If it gets in there too tight, you probably have to cut it out. So we don't want to do that for a stopper knot. What we'd like to do is a figure eight, right? So we can bring it around, right? Makes a nice figure eight, also easier, much easier to get out. There are many different ways to do it, or not many, but there's a couple of different ways to do it. I don't care how you do it, as long as you come out with a figure eight. Put it in the end of your line, put it in a place in your line where you want to stop it from running through a block or a shiv, a block, uh, a block or some kind of shiv, some kind of pulley. Great stop or not for that. And again, my least favorite that I talked about yesterday, which was a barrel hitch. One second. So I demonstrated for this yesterday. Again, not one of my favorites. Let's see if I have enough in this piece of line to do it. So I'm gonna make sure that I place my line under the center, okay? And all I'm gonna do here is make a half of a square knot, okay? I wanna separate this side right here and this side right here. Make sure that they are 90 degrees from each other. And now I have made myself a barrel hitch. Again, um, if you watched my previous video that I made about it, not super happy about it. That never gives me form and, warm and fuzzies to tie, but it is one of the required Coast Guard knots. So again, for me, I'm gonna go right over left. I'm looking for this right here. All right, bring it over under the lip, under the lip. And I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna finish it out with a bowlin up here. That's how I could finish that out. So, just some examples again, the ones that we covered today um, of the knots, bends, and hitches. Those are the way that I teach them here. Um, and uh, if you got comments, make sure you send me a message and laugh at me for dropping my camera. Um, and pointing it the wrong direction. At least I corrected it this time. Um, thanks again for watching. You guys are awesome. Thanks for helping me learn to be able to teach. Hopefully I'll get better at this.